good share of them, but we just didn't have the funds and didn't have the people to go in there and get a good share of them, and the good markets would have come with them. So we've gone back to the basics. We're talking philosophy. We're, we're getting back on the ground level and beginning to put production on. We've had people in the markets. We've opened up some new markets. We've taken advantage of situations. Not that we're so smart. You know, I, a guy like stand up and tell you how smart he is. Well, let me tell you a little story about how, how smart you can be sometimes, and you'll learn a little bit. There's these two Mexicans down in a hole digging, you know, and one would hand the dirt to the other guy, and he'd throw it up. The guy would dig a hole, and he'd hand it to the other guy, and he'd throw it up. This college professor came along, and he looked down in the hole, and he said, John, well, that's the stupidest thing I ever saw. He says, why don't both of you dig? And both of you throw the dirt out, so you'll, you'll get the hole where it's supposed to be a lot quicker. The one fellow jumps up, and he climbs up out of the hole, and he says, well, if you're so smart... Prove it. So the professor takes his hand and he puts it up against the tree and he says, Hit my hand. The guy goes, Whoop! And the professor moves the hand and the guy hits the tree. He's young. Goom! Man! So the Mexican crawls back down in the hole and starts handing the dirt to the other fellow. He says, What did he say to you? Well, he just told me how smart he was. Well, how did he prove it? Hit me. <laughs> So sometimes we're not as smart as we think we are. <laughs> All it is is having a feeling and being able to convey that feeling to people and the membership that you care, that you have their best interest, and take advantage of the situations as they arise. We have a situation in Maine. It didn't come from our making. It came from our opposition. Some of our best help sometimes comes from our opposition. And if we're able to get out and take advantage of those situations, in Maine, for example, right at the present time, our major competitor, which is a conglomerate uh, merger of a, of a cooperative and the largest independent handler of, and bottler of milk in the East, uh, H.P. Hood Company, they're going to flex their muscles out there. They're going to show how strong this association is, so they're going to take all the producers away from the Maine dairies, represent them, and pay them. Now, there's a dollar difference between the main independent market and the federal order market. <coughs> and what was going to happen is they were going to re-blend those main producers, take the dollar away from them, and kind of shuffle it all over around wherever there would be some spots that we might be able to be effective in bargaining and, and pay out a better price. But the main dairies resisted. And finally, the a few days ago, they told them, go ahead, take your milk out. We have an alternative. Now, had not the membership in NFO over the period of years stayed on that roller coaster, stuck to it, those dairies today would not have had an alternative. Now their situation is turned around, and now we can build. If we keep laying our groundwork, we sold the milk, we're buying a little extra in order to take care of our flush. So I don't say we're buying it, we're handling it. Excuse me, he's going to kick the slats out of me if I say we buy it, but... Legally, we don't. I mean, we just broker it to cover our contracts so that we take care of our spring flush in that area. The, it's kind of interesting when you're talking to eastern handlers. They tried to convince us out there that they were paying too much for the milk, even though they were paying considerably less than the negotiated price in the Midwest, especially on mozzarella plants. There's as much as 70 to 80 cent premiums in the Midwest, but they couldn't pay that out east because the yields aren't as good, and because you people in Wisconsin can transport your cheese out to the East Coast a lot for a lot less than this gentleman could transport it from Vermont to Boston. Now that's what he was trying to say. Your yields were better, so you, they got a dollar, a dollar more a pound on the cheese so that they could afford to pay a 70 cent premium, and the fact they could haul it out because they got a backhaul and it didn't cost them anything to haul it out here. Well, if you believe that, it's utterly ridiculous. But that was some of the things that they were trying to use and justify in their own mind why they had to give their product away. But one of the greatest educational things I think this organization has ever accomplished is the fact that when you do get a buyer, and he does understand your program, because your program does not rest just with increased price to producers. You have to understand it takes the program right on through because it gives the buyer 
then the ability to pass on those prices that he doesn't have at the present time. In other words, if his product is going to cost him so much, his operating within his structure is going to cost him so much, he'll be able to pass it on. So it's, it's more than just raising our general price level. It's giving the industry the ability to pass that on in the proper way to the consumer who ultimately, which is you and I and a bunch of other people, to pay the price to cover the product that we have. That's what we're attempting to do. We're attempting to educate our membership to enroll more producers. We have a 36 million pound uh, increase that's needed to cover our 15 percent uh, growth in the organization. With the help of the good Lord up above, many of the good members in New England and the staff that we have, we're going to accomplish that. Thank you. As I was listening to Ted McCarty talk about the doom and gloom, it kind of reminded me of a bumper sticker that uh, I saw on the way down here. Uh, I, I kind of like to read these bumper stickers. Some of them are pretty fascinating. This one said, if Dolly Parton were a farmer, she'd be flat busted too. <laughs> yeah, I was in the Volkswagen that time. Uh, you, ordinarily, right now, I would have all the members stand up. I think we'll do that again. You, you, some of you are getting a little sleepy anyhow. You need to uh, just all the members stand up. The, the staff stay seated, please. Now, I want the staff to applaud the members because they're the ones that are going to get this 15% for us. We need you people. Thank you. We need you people out there in order for us to get that 15%. Now, Ted was talking to you, Ted Strait, about the procure procurement teams. And one of the most important things that we do when we have one of these teams go out on the road is to meet with the members in the area to make sure that they are going to be involved enough to carry on through after that team leaves. And we have quite a training session with the members themselves. We tell them what they can expect from the teams. But we also tell them what we expect from them. And one of the things that we want from you as members when these teams go on the road is we want you to have a list of names of the farmers in that area so that you can take our staff people to enough places in a day's time so they can make six eyeball contacts. Now six is a pretty darn good average day in and day out. But in order to make six contacts, you're going to have to have a list of 10 or 12 names. Because ordinarily, there's going to be about half the farmers going to be in town, out in the field, or they're going to be somewhere else. That's one of the things we need. Now, we can take our staff and use a plat book. Most of them know how to read them. And most of them could go up and down the road by themselves if they had to. But we want you people there because you are also being trained even though you don't know it. If you listen to one of our staff out on that road making six contacts in a day's time, you've had six training sessions. And some of it is going to rub off on you. We know that. Now, the other thing we want from you people when those teams go out on the road is we want you to turn into every driveway. We know that you have people out there that you don't want to go see. Frank, you remember the one that kicked us off the place? Come back. About How long was it? He called back up and wanted an appointment, didn't he? You never know. We want you to turn into each and every driveway. The thing we don't want you to do is don't tell that staff man all the bad things that you know about that person he's going in to see. Let him find out for himself. <laughs> we know that you know that he didn't do this during the holding action or he did something else he sold his... It's hard to tell what it was, but don't tell these staff people that. We don't want them to know it. 
Now, if they've got a cross dog, you can warn them about that. We'd appreciate it. But don't tell them all the other things you know. Now, I remember them coming back and telling me about uh, the team up in Wisconsin one day that they had driven up and down the road past one person's place three times that day because the writer said that there wasn't any sense in going in to see him. They knew, absolutely knew that guy would not be interested. And finally, it was getting towards the end of the day, and they didn't have any place else to go, so the staff person said, let's go in here. It looks like a good place. As they went in, the first thing that farmer said is, how's come you guys went by here three times already and didn't stop? <laughs> you don't know what that person might be thinking. So give our staff a chance. They're going to help train you, and you're going to help train the rest of the people in your counties. And you know, before you know it, we're going to be going on that trip to the Super Bowl, you and I. We're going to be going towards that cost of production plus a reasonable profit. This time, I'm going to open it up for question and answers. We do have to get these meetings over with, but I'll, at this point, I'll entertain any questions that you might have. 